Meet India's youngest serial killer, Amardeep Sada, age 8. He was born and raised in Bihar, India. Being the son of a day laborer while his mother was a homemaker. His mother asks him to take care of his cousin, who was six years old at the time. His aunt had found a job in the city and could not take her daughter with her to her new job. Amadeep's mother left the home for a short time and asked him to watch the little girl as she rested. But instead of watching the little one, he choked the little girl to death with his bare hands. He choked and choked her until all the life left her body, and he was satisfied with what he had done. As he dragged her lifeless body to his backyard, he began smashing her small head with a ton of bricks. This little boy is a monster. After that, he put her body in a grave to cover up the crime he had committed. His mother returned home and asked where her niece was, and he told his mother, I killed her. As he led his mother to their backyard to show her his cousin's grave site, she couldn't believe what she was seeing. The mother was very frantic and tried digging up her niece's lifeless body, but it was too late. Amadeep's mom was six months pregnant and soon found out her son was a murderer. When his father arrived home, he beat Amadeep while he was tied to a pole. After the beating, neither his father nor his mother would report this crime to the police. Because they were still trying to protect this monster of a child. His aunt returned to their home to pick up her daughter. And realized her daughter was gone. Amadeep's mother and father begged their sister's forgiveness for the tragic situation. His aunt, while being very upset and crying in disbelief, forgave her nephew and respected the family's wishes. Later, his mother and father would soon regret this decision, and it would haunt them for the rest of their lives. Amadeep's mother soon gave birth to a girl and tried to instill in him love and protection for his sister. But he did not care and felt like he had to do something to get rid of his little sister, and so he did. One day all the family was asleep, and Amadeep saw this as an opportunity to commit the second act of murder again. He strangled his little sister just like he strangled his cousin. What a brutal act from a child so young. He put his sister's body back in her small bed. Afterwards, he began to play with his toys as if nothing had happened. As his mother woke up, she went into her daughter's room to feed her, only to soon find out that something was wrong, and her six-month-old daughter was not responding. Her body lay lifeless in her bed, and his mother knew he had committed this heinous crime the same way he had with his little cousin. She asks, Did you kill your little sister, Mardeep? He grinned and said, Yes. His mother and father were very upset, both were crying uncontrollably, and his father began whipping him once again. Because this was their evil son's second murder. Their neighbor needed to go into the city to run errands, and left her six-month-old baby in a school near the eyes of the authorities. Later, she returned to the village only to find out her daughter was missing. The authorities started searching for the missing baby, but could not find the little one anywhere. And others in the village knew of Amadeep's heinous crimes and started to think he had been involved in this crime as well. The police started to question Amadeep at the police station and noticed he was very calm. They asked him, Did you kill your neighbor's baby, Kushbu? He replied, Give me some food, and I will tell you. All the officers were amazed by his response and provided him with two biscuits. Afterward, he took them to the baby's body left in a shallow grave. Amadeep had done the same thing to all three of his victims by strangling them to death. He provides the cops with all the details regarding each crime he has committed with no hesitation. 
Amardeep's mother and father had a heavy price to pay for not alerting authorities about their son's murders. The police stated that they did this, not because they were trying to cover up anything, but because they were trying to protect and help their son. But the police also stated that this was no excuse. And I totally agree with them. After the investigation was complete, the superintendent handed this matter to the courts. As they waited for a decision from the juvenile courts, the superintendent asked that this monster be provided separate living quarters from everyone else so he wouldn't hurt anyone he encountered. The police also stated they had no evidence of his prior killings, which all his neighbors accused him of. Amadeep underwent a psychiatric evaluation by medical experts. And they came to the conclusion that he might be suffering from a disorder known as conduct disorder, a mental state where a patient feels a sense of gratification after inflicting injuries on others. The medical experts stated that such cases need immediate medical intervention and doctors need to address the chemical imbalance in patients' brains. They also implied that the intensity of Amadeep's actions was very dangerous, that they had never seen anything like this, and that his symptoms were severe. This may be hereditary and could run in his family. This is my take on this evil monster. He murdered a total of three people, two of whom were members of his family. His six-month-old cousin, the daughter of a maternal uncle, his six-month-old sister, and a six-month-old girl, Kushbu, the neighbor's daughter. I blame his mother and father for not reporting this crime immediately, and all the other murders could have been avoided. And his aunt should not have gone along with this under any circumstances. No one in their right mind would have gone along with this if this had happened to someone else. How could the parents act as if nothing happened? These were children, not adults, but little innocent kids. I'm in complete disbelief that anyone would allow and accept this. Hell no. Beating him did not work. They should have gotten him some help and fast. I'm sure they saw the signs very early on in his life, whether they wanted to admit it or not. And in my opinion, they both should have been charged with all three murders that their son committed, along with him. In India, I am not 100% sure about their laws, but in the United States, he would still be in a juvenile detention center and heading to prison once he turned 18 years of age. This is a very sad case, and this is the end of this story. Thank you for watching. Also, Stay tuned for more stories like this, and please like, share, and subscribe to Crimes in Candleland.